of Strawberry Patches podcast. I'm very, very excited to be here again. I have lots of hand-dyed yarn and fiber to show you. And uh, I want to, first of all, welcome everyone. If you are coming back and you've been here for a while, a big warm hug to you. And if it's your first time, my name is Marina. I'm a Russian girl from um, who lived in Russia and Turkey and then came here to New Zealand and found again my passion for fiber, dyeing yarn, spinning, knitting, crocheting and everything. <laughs> New Zealand. And today's episode is about spinning fiber, a mystery fiber box and some projects that I've been working on, such as some cute animals and I will chat to you all about it in a minute. How have you been guys? Happy Easter! It's been a lovely, lovely Easter here with lovely weather and I hope you also celebrate it with your loved ones and if you haven't I just hope you have a really nice week. Uh, every Easter in our home uh, we made, I made a tradition of um, little Easter egg hunt that I will show you maybe at the end of this video where my daughters go around looking for little Easter eggs which have like little um, presents in them, stickers or socks or something and sometimes chocolate but not too much. And also one part of this tradition is that they, um, well the first time for each of them it started they had a bunny and now that they've already have this have had this bunny it's like this is Lydia's bunny she's had it for four years now and each year I make a new dress for her and this is Lily's I have two daughters <laughs> one is five one is two so this is Lily's the youngest and this year she had this dress on for Easter so as you can see this is the same pattern by Cynthia Valet and this is the pattern called Bunny Odile and Odette. Uh, there, it's the same pattern, it's just that I knitted this on a quite finer yarn from a finer yarn and this one from a bit thicker yarn. And yeah, they look a bit different. This is my all of my all of this stuff is my hand dyed yarn. And yeah, this dress. Uh, well, yeah, I'm jumping right into the finished objects, right? And there will be a little bit more chat about what I've been up to later. Oh, I've had a haircut, by the way. <laughs> so Bunny Odile is wearing a modified pattern from Billy the Raccoon's sweater, which I followed the idea from dear Helen from the Mousy Makes podcast. Hi, Helen. And I just knitted the sweater and then just continued straight, which I wish I had made a bit more increases at the bottom so that it would be a bit flaring out because it's a bit too tight at the back, but it's still fine. My daughter wanted the pink dress, so I did that. And this is the um, Aggie the Sheep's dress with omitting the stripes. I just took some yarn that I dyed very early on in my dyeing um, experimental career and um, yeah I didn't know what to do with this yarn because it's not sock yarn but it's so um, speckled so I tried to make this dress with a nice detail at the back maybe I will put a little button here I'm not sure yet or maybe I'll embroider something but that's not all I've been making I've also been um, requested to make a blankie for Mush the Bear. So this is Mush the Bear, which in our home, it's a girl and her name is Masha. And she's wearing this cute dungarees. And yeah, she needs a new pair, I think. And she also needs a husband. So apparently, well, in the book, uh, Mush the Bear um, has a blanket that Aggie knitted for him. And here is the blanket that I knitted for Masha. Nothing fancy, just a very, like a big swatch, basically. <laughs> and that was my car knitting when I was, say, waiting for my kids or waiting somewhere. So yeah, now she has a blanket. 
Also, that's not all, I really been meaning to make Lucy the pig. Um, oh yeah, Masha the bear is from the same book. I wish I had the book, hold on. This is the book that I mean, uh, Moosh and Friends. And in this book, as you can see here, there is a little piggy. So in the book, there are two characters, Mira and Alphonse. And I decided to give my piggy a name, Lucy. And I have knitted her quite a while back, but she hasn't had any clothes. She was borrowing the clothes from Odile and from others. But this time I'm using my um, gifted advent calendar yarn from Ye Ye Yarn. And I've knitted her this little wee jumper and a skirt as uh, in the book. Let me see if I can find. Well, yes. Here she is. I hope you can see. So in the book, she has a checkered skirt and a jumper. I have not finished the skirt. I'm planning to do the vertical lines with a crochet hook or duplicate stitch. We shall see. I haven't finished and haven't blocked it yet, but I just wanted to show you because I think she looks really cute and this color suit her very well. Right, before I forget, I'm wearing the Sonetta uh, sweater or um, t-shirt, sweater, which I did a test knit for ages ago and uh, it's a bit wrinkled, sorry for that. But I really love it and I should wear it more. It was a very, very lovely knit and the pattern is by Yamagaya. And uh, it's available on Ravelry. I'll link all the patterns that I'm talking about in the description box. All right, more finished objects. Just a pair of socks that were scrappy socks from all kinds of gifted, 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 gifted yarns, which I don't even know the names of some of them, but yeah, just a pair of nice vanilla socks. And they might be gifted to someone at some point. Okay, now this is all of my finished objects. Now I'm going to tell you all about my works in progress, which there aren't that many, but I've been really, really excited to knit up the yarn. Remember I showed you in the previous episode where I showed you like a ton of yarn that I've been gifted and buying. So this is Nomadic Yarns um, from Canada, and this is the Pool Party colorway. And I'm making myself more striping socks. I just love how she chose the colors, and I love the idea of just not worrying about tying the ends, of just doing that. So this is the first sock. And... Uh, I decided not to do the afterthought heel here. I just wanted to kind of go with the, just follow, just do the whole sock right away. And this is the contrast mini. Well, the contrast uh, part is again, the mini from my gifted by lovely Caroline Ye Ye Yan advent calendar. And I'm loving knitting on these. I'm also making this habitation throw that I showed you last time. I've done two rows on it. It might not seem like much, but as you can imagine, I am past the half point. So here was the middle. And this is where I was last time, right here. And now it's this big. It's huge. Humongous. And I'm loving it. I'm really, really, um, it's a great project for using up your scraps. Although with my gauge, I find that I needed to add a few full skeins because like I want the colors to repeat as well. And I really needed some bright colors, which I didn't have in my minis collection. Well, not minis, but the idea for this blanket that I want to do is to use up all of my hand dyed yarns from the very, very first ones that I dyed, like this was the one of the very first one I dyed, to the very recent ones, like, which one would be the most, or maybe this orange one would be the recent one. And um, 
I want to take it with me to Woolfest, by the way. Very, very soon I'm going to see you guys at Woolfest in Auckland on the 25th of May from 10 to 4 at Kumeo Showgrounds and I will be there with all my yarn. I will bring some toys. I will bring this body. Hopefully it will be finished. I plan to hang it somewhere at the back so that people can kind of see the colors that I gravitate to and the colors that I love dyeing. So yeah, I'm working on this baby for you guys. Well, not just for you guys, of course, for my family because winter's coming here in New Zealand and it will be nice to snuggle up on the sofa there when we are watching the movie with my girls or with my husband. So another work in progress. And ta-da! Oh, this has been, I love this project, but it's been, I've made my life a bit hard with it <laughs> because I didn't, um, the gauge, I did a gauge swatch and everything, but obviously when I was knitting in the round on the big, um, around the big number of stitches, my row and whatever gauge just didn't work. So I had to re-knit twice, like I've knitted twice up to here and then I had to rip it back because at the back I had too many stitches. So the last modification I did, I decreased rapidly, which I hope you cannot see and I hope it blocks out. And then I also cast on a bit more stitches under the arms and now it's fine. I really love it. I'm planning to finish it for Wolfest as well. I'm very close to the Pico bind off. And by the way, I forgot to say what it is. It's the Calypso sweater by Alana Bank, which is my friend. Her company is called the Black Cat Knitting Company. And she is now working on the cardigan version of this design. Isn't it nice? I really need that in my life as well. So once I finish this one, I'll be making the cardigan. I'm so excited. It will be a stick. So it will be my first stick. Maybe I should knit a like a baby cardigan first and then stick it and see how how it's done before I um, jump into cutting this beauty. I knitted quite a lot when we were in the movies. We watched Dune 2 and uh, I was surprised by how yeah, quite well. I can, how my, the movie was like two and a half hours and I was knitting without dropping a stitch for almost all of this time in the dark. And this is how it grew. I have a little uh, stitch marker here that I made. And I have some Easter, well, not Easter, but some bunnies with carrots as the needle stoppers, which I will be I'm hoping to add them to the shop very soon. My husband promised that this coming weekend he's going to tweak the website so that I can add things like that. So yeah, this is my Calypso sweater. And I'm working on my line cardigan, which is the Andre Maui pattern, the Comfort Fade cardigan, which will be my third one. I've been so obsessed with this color and I actually knitted on this one the most until I talked to my dear friend Kate, who is an amazing designer. She just sees um, the sweater or a cardigan or whatever and she doesn't do any calculations, just very simple, basic, and then she knits it up. And uh, I'm going to show you a picture. She's bought some of my yarn and she knitted her father a really, really lovely sweater which looks very simple, but so good. Amazing. So anyways, she, is, uh, she used to sew, I guess that's where she gets her wisdom from. And she told me that if I want this cardigan to be a perfect fit, then I should definitely make, um, should have more stitches under the arms so that my arms are not as slim as the pattern suggested. And I listened to her because I know she's right. And I ripped back like this much actually all of this <laughs> i read back all of that and i did a bit more increases because as she was saying that back then when the pattern was first designed it was more of a fashion to wear the slim fitting things and now it's more of a 
more loose garments so yes i'm going i have enough yarn i dyed it up myself and i can dye more and i will make it a really comfy uh, relaxed fit cardigan so this i need since it's not following the pattern anymore i need to i don't even remember what i need to do here i stopped because i was so discouraged by all the ripping back and I did a bit more increases here and I will continue a bit more and then do the picking up, not the picking up. When I separate for the sleeves, I'm just gonna do this part bigger. But I love, I love this color and I love this project. And I was so obsessed by this color that as you know, I dyed lots of um, yarn in this color. And I also in that batch, I dyed this fiber, which is called the Blooming Lime. And this is my 80% fully machine washable fine Corydale and 20% nylon for durability. And I just experimented with using the dye from leftover dye from <clears throat> the other yarn and speckling it with some other dyes that I had lying around. And this is how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really curious to see what, how the colors will mix in the spun, fi spun yarn, but I'm not keeping this one because I have too much fiber to spin. So this is now available in the shop. You can find it there. And like this, very smoothly, we are transitioning from the works in progress to the shop update i guess yes let's call it that so i have um, where was this one i have uh, finally sent all the mystery um the fiber box clubs <clears throat> to you guys whoever purchased them and also there was a giveaway and the winner was angela uh whom i haven't met before but we chatted afterwards and she said that her daughter, who is in her 20s, she's an amazing spinner and she will hopefully like to make something from it. So all of the boxes are shipped now and I've been getting lovely feedback from you guys. Like uh, one of my customers said that she's in love with it and she's it's her favorite color and she wanted to order one. She did order more. So <clears throat> if you want to see what was in the box, I'm going to put a little reveal right here finally my dear friends i can share with you the recipe book monthly fiber club this box is for the march uh, fiber box and i hope you have received yours and it's not a surprise for you but if you haven't look away let's open it It says, Dear Fiber Adventure, welcome to the first mystery fiber box. In April, I invite you to admire lavender, a simple plant that has so many uses. I've always loved the smell of it, be it in soaps or freshly washed sheets, but I remember being so surprised when I first tried it in an ice cream in Paris and it tasted so great. So I just talk about why I chose this fiber and... At the back of this, I'm just offering you a little strawberry almond milk and blueberry Greek yogurt and lavender popsicle recipe. I hope you try it. Let's see what else is in here. Shall we go for fiber or this one? Let's go for fiber. I wish you could smell. Oh, it's so lovely. So here are some stickers and a um, little label that you can sew on your finished garment and here is the braid this one i left for myself <laughs> so i'm going to spin it too and this is the corydale and nylon blend in this uh, it shows a bit more blue, but it's actually purple and a touch of green. I'll insert some pictures. So this 
fiber is perfect for socks be because it has nylon for durability. And I invite you to knit and spin and knit some socks for yourself. Let's see what's in this little one. This is the reason why this box smells divine. I've been admiring this soap maker for a while. This is the Blackbird Grove um, little company. And uh, the owner, Selena, she's just amazing. This is a handcrafted soap, which has lavender and lemongrass. And look at that. She uses her botanicals from her own garden to decorate the soaps. And I wish you could smell it. It smells so beautiful. It's more of a lemongrass smell than the lavender, but you can still uh, feel a hint of it as well. So, yay, I get, I got lucky that I am also going to keep one of the soaps for me. This is the Simone's box, and I hope you will be interested in seeing the next one. I'm getting ready to dye it up for you. So yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this mini video and I did put a lot of work into combining this box and I'm very excited to continue this and I have big plans for May's fiber, block, uh, fiber box. So I hope you will find it interesting and want to purchase it. There's a link to my web shop here on the screen and also in the description box, but basically this is what it what you can expect just a different recipe and a different color and kind of different accessories with it so i am very excited next month's fiber is going to be super super soft and i just oof, can't wait to dye it for you guys and uh what else some more fiber that i dyed that is not uh in the club it's just some fiber that i have in the shop this is the oh, what's the name the orange something orange um i've been recently dyeing only the corydale and nylon and i really love how this color actually what i did here was i dyed it like a pale orange and then I speckled with some more orange so that you can see these dark parts these are the speckles also I have been I have dyed some yarn and I had some leftover dye solutions and I dyed up this fiber which reminded me so much of the American flag that I called it Americana and I guess this is this was on my mind because I really miss my sister who is in the States and I haven't seen her for ages. So yeah, this could make some really fun socks as well. And this is the nylon uh, Corydale blend as well. Right, now, shall I show you a little bit of my yarn? I have dyed up some really cute um, bright colors in different bases but I will flip the screen and show it to you that will be better let's see what I have in the shop I have dyed this lovely decay away twist and twist New Zealand merino which you can see all the details here in this wonderful bright colors and I have let's see how many skeins of this I have this many <laughs> six of these and they were a custom order and I just dyed a bit more than I needed because I loved the color so so much. I love this yarn because when you knit with it it's super soft and it's so bouncy and the garments I have done so many garments in this yarn it's just one of my favorite bases unfortunately the skeins don't um do it anymore don't sell it anymore but i still have a couple of cages that i will be dying then i have been asked to dye up some sparkle browns and i obliged and i dyed up this chestnut which is a 
Well, you can make socks with it. It has nylon and silver stellina. Look at that. This one is called chestnut, and this is the same base, but I called it the milk chocolate. You can see this one is a bit more, more red, and this one is a bit more yellow. Also, we have just two of these left, Sea Creature, which is 100% New Zealand Merino, Superwash. 100 gram is about 400 meters, and this one is Sea Creature. It has these teals and neon purples and blue, all mixed up with some violet. And uh, one of my um, knitting group friends bought it for to make a garment for her grandchild, which I can't wait to see because she's in our knitting group, so probably she'll bring to, to show it. So I showed you the fiber, let me just quickly show you a little bit closer and where's the lime blossom here's the lime blossom as you can see it's super pretty also i have finally received my birthday present which i told you about i'm i've asked my husband to gift me a drum cutter <laughs> i'm so excited so when it came right away i started carding something and my daughter has filmed a little bit maybe i'll put a little video here of how i was excitedly carding stuff <laughs> Of course, I want to show you the bats that I have created. So in these bats, they're um, just my trial ones. It's not something fancy or something that I'm super proud of. It was just to play with different things that I had. So I have um, used some of the fibers that I had from a retreat where Annette showed us my lovely friend Annette from Twisted Sisters, she showed us how to, uh, I think it was about how to spin different fibers and she had really, really a big variety of things to try. We had camel, we had cashmere, we had cotton, bamboo, silk, different like merino and corridor and things like that. And uh, Stalina as well. So this is what I did. I mixed all kinds of things here. I mixed some uh, silk that I dyed, I think I dyed it from one of the dyeing workshops. Then this short fiber here, I think it's the bamboo. Then also in here I threw in some stellina. I don't know if you can see the sparkly beads. And this, a bit rough to the touch, I think it's probably Corydale. Although in here I might have as well thrown, oh yes, I have some probably Polworth, this gray one. I have no idea because this was from another workshop. I think it was with Kurt. So I made these bats just for funsies. I just wanted to see how different fibers play with each other. And I have spun the first bat. And as you can see, it's very uneven and it's very, um, it's experimental basically. I don't know if you can see much, but it's going to be everything in it. There is some cotton, there is some bamboo, and God knows what else, silk. And here's another one. Probably this one was one of the other ones that I... I Here I used a different Stellina and some... I think it was Lincoln locks that I had. This You see this really um, blue and... I don't know if you can see, but they have really, really nice jumpy um, fibers there. 
So I combined here to the, for the, I think it was again Corydale with some silk. Yeah, when you can touch it, you know which fibers are a bit finer and which ones are a bit rougher. It's all due to Micron, which I keep saying and then I will repeat it every time. I'm so lucky that I've been welcomed to this creative fiber family here in Auckland and from all these super talented and very knowledgeable ladies that I've met, like Margaret, Annette, Cher, Sharon, Oh, and all the other ladies, I just learned so much from them. And the last pad that I want to show you is this more purpley one, which I threw a bit more silk in and again, mixed up different fibers and textures and some Stellina and inside again here, white, see a little bit shiny. This is either cotton or bamboo. Oh, I think it will spin up nicely. So yeah, I'm just going to spill them all together and create this crazy skein and uh, see what I do with it. Maybe I'll sell it because I really, I don't need that much yarn, but I just enjoy spinning it. So this is all the shop news. I really hope that you go and check out the website, especially after the coming weekend, after the 7th of April. It should be, uh, by then I should add some more things like the needle stoppers and I plan to bring in some project bags as well. Yeah, this podcast I don't plan to make super huge, but I really wanted to just say two more things that uh, while I was knitting on, oh, oh, I totally forgot. There is something in this bag. I, I bet you were wondering what's in this beautiful bag. Um, since there are some bunnies in this one, I, this is my Easter project and inside leaves my Easter hat from the, remember last time I showed you, I dyed up some Easter egg colorway, which was very popular. And I'm making my little Lydia a little hat. And this is the pattern, the muscle bar hat, which is very, very popular. And I made one already. And I I think I'm going to do half of it one color and half of it in a different color. So right now I'm thinking, what's the other color that I would like to add? My idea is that when you fold it up, well, since it's a big tube, I want the other color showing as a brim or if, I want to do it the other way. I'm just gonna use the other color as the main and this colorful stripe will be the brim. That's the plan for this beautiful yarn and it lives in this bag is made by Daniela from Anita's suitcase and I just love how spring-like and colorful and beautiful it is and it has this really really lovely fabric inside as well. Just a little drawstring bag but so so happy, it makes me so happy. Right, and what I was going to say, I was watching, uh, I found a new podcast that I would really like to recommend you. So apparently, Cynthia and her friend Emily have uh, filmed their first podcast and their new channel on YouTube is called um, Bulletin Tricot. Uh, which is in French, but they have subtitles that you can do automatic translation. And what I loved about it is that this designer, this beautiful lady who lives in France, she, I think potentially, she's, she's just shown her little uh, bunny that she's designing that will be her next pattern. And she's showing other things that she's working on. And I find it fascinating to learn more about the designers, of the patterns that I'm obsessed about. As you can see, I'm obsessed about this book. It's becoming a bit worn and my daughters love looking at it. So I really recommend that if you love knitted toys, go and check out Cynthia and Emily's video. And they only have one episode, but it's super interesting to see their personality, you know, and if you speak French, it's even better. Right, and the last thing I have for you guys today is a question. Um, I've been thinking of since my mystery yarn fiber mystery box 
what boxes were so popular, I am going to probably go ahead with the idea of the advent calendar. What do you think about advent calendars? Should I do it? Would you be interested in it? So if you have never heard of an advent calendar, basically it's a um, set of 24 minis, mini skeins, as in 20 grams or 10 grams. And sometimes it also comes with a 25th skein, which is a 100, grain, 100 gram full skein. And this is what I got from lovely um, friend Caroline last year. And I was so inspired that I wanted to dye up my own advent calendar, which I also want to have some extra things in it as well. And I'm working on that already. But I need some feedback from you guys. Would you be interested in buying it? And if yes, what would you want in it? So shall we work on it together? Yes, I'm excited. So thank you very much for watching. That's all from me today. I hope you have enjoyed and found this little video inspiring. I really, really love reading your comments and I'm always answering them. So please do communicate with me. Tell me what you're working on. Tell me if you want to see my advent calendars coming this year. And I hope you have a wonderful time and have, have a, had a lovely Easter. At the end, I'm going to include a little video of how my little daughters were collecting their eggs. And I hope you enjoy that too. So, uh, Matiwa, that's the Maori for bye-bye. And oh yes, I became a citizen of New Zealand. So I'm very proud of that. And I'm very happy, so yay! Uh, I can also put some pictures of me receiving my citizenship certificate. So I hope you also have some wonderful time and I'll see you soon. Bye! Молодец! Да! Молодцы, девчонки. Молодцы. Ой, божечки, ой, божечки. Все хорошо? Собираем. Собираем. Ну, я помогу тебе собрать. Ой, на, на, на корзинку. Вот места-то хватит картины. Хватит. Да. Ой, смотрите, смотрите, смотрите. Какая красота. Подожди, убери корзинку. Можно она подойдет и посмотрит? Еще, еще. Смотри, Лили, вот это твой. Зайка тебе что принес? Большое. Ух ты, какой а большой. О, какой мой гейон. Выходи, выходи. выходи. Ой, ты моя классная. Ой, ой, молодец. Ой, как много. Открылся. Не страшно. Ложи туда, ложи. Потом посмотрим. Ой, вот еще. Смотри, вот еще. Вот они еще. Вау, вау. Ой, ты там все собрала. 